We lost a great one yesterday when director Joel Schumacher passed away at the age of 80. This dude was versatile. With a career spanning near 50 years, Schumacher could bring us comedy, horror, war films, dramas, home invasion thrillers. Even when he would make a misstep, not only would the film still be pretty, but goddamn you remember that film. The man could take melodramas and still make them memorable today. Whether it's with the Brat Pack and St. Elmo's Fire with its kickin' theme song, or a courtroom drama like A Time to Kill, which is still just as quotable today as it was 24 years ago. Even before Phantom of the Opera, the guy could take Gotham City and even make that look like an opera. This was an exciting director, someone I always looked forward to, because you had no idea what kind of movie he was going to do next. If you're looking for some great Schumacher movies to watch, here's a list of five that you should definitely check out. Number five, Phone Booth. This is a one-two punch of Schumacher as director and Larry Cohen as screenwriter. Cohen had spent decades trying to get this script made, going all the way back to Cohen pitching it to Hitchcock in the 1960s. Eventually released in 2002, this real-time morality tale thriller about a man trapped in a phone booth by a sniper is beautifully shot, with Schumacher doing a brilliant job of keeping the suspense going in this one-location thriller. And having been made in the early 2000s, it's also a weird love letter and swan song to phone booths themselves, which began decreasing around that time. Number four, The Lost Boys. I remember seeing the trailer for this all the time on television, and it's one of the earliest things I can think of that really piqued my interest in horror as a kid. The other trailer around that time that had that effect on six-year-old me was The Midnight Hour, which isn't quite as good as The Lost Boys. Schumacher, always great at directing various genres, combines several here between horror, comedy, and teen flick, and makes them all work perfectly on their own without causing any tonal whiplash. The movie is funny, it's creepy, and do I still think of maggots and worms sometimes when looking at rice and lo mein? Yes, I do. Do I still eat them? Well, yeah, of course. Number three, Flatliners. You know, between Flatliners, The Lost Boys, and Phone Booth, I think Kiefer Sutherland was a nice good luck charm in Schumacher's filmography. I also love A Time to Kill, also with Sutherland. After the standout opening line and shot, Flatliners was a movie that always hooked me from the very beginning, with its already intriguing premise of college students temporarily dying to report back on life after death, and then going from there by making the demons of their past haunt the shit out of them and mess these people up. It's a gorgeous movie, the casting is excellent, they all have great chemistry together, and it's totally a fun ride. Number two, 8mm. I love 8mm. This movie makes me love Schumacher so much more. Here's a guy who, after the critical and box office disappointment of Batman and Robin, said, screw camp and cheese. I'm going to follow that up with the absolute darkest, most sadistic, disturbing movie of my entire career. This is like Schumacher doing an updated version of Paul Schrader's Hardcore. And it holds its own next to the great sleaze flicks of that time period. The film about Nick Cage investigating a snuff film does not hold back the sexuality and violence. I saw this movie in the theater, and it contains one of the most intense climaxes I've seen on the big screen. You could hear a friggin' pin drop in that theater. No one was breathing. Between the standout moments like that and Nick Cage calling the victim's mom and getting her permission to fuck these people up, this one has stuck with me for 21 years. I love it. Number one, Falling Down. This is one I often see top people's Schumacher list, and I can see why, because it tops mine too. In an against tight performance by Michael Douglas, it's a movie about a psychopath just having a really, really bad day. Weirdly, the movie predates very common cell phone footage of people freaking out in grocery stores and gas stations. It takes everyday annoyances and makes a thriller out of it. This guy causes a reign of terror across L.A. with great set pieces like this damn soda is too expensive or screw you, give me my breakfast, I don't care if it's five minutes past lunch. What the movie does brilliantly is that it dares you to root for the guy at first until pulling the rug out and saying, this is a crazy ass who needs to go. Now go do some self-reflection of your own and try not to shoot someone over a Big Mac. 
I'm really going to miss Schumacher. Considering how many wildly different genres he did, he makes it very easy to take this week and revisit any of his films and applying them to whatever mood you're in at the time. Also, the dude wrote The Wiz! Tell us your favorite Schumacher movies below in the comments, and subscribe to our channel today at youtube.com slash stonegremlinproductions, and click the notification bell.